It's been interactive AXA legislative lunch break. Edgar and I will get you all of your latest news and information from the state capitol and CDE with an in-depth analysis on how it impacts you. Plus, today we are joined by State Senator Nancy Skinner. She's going to talk about her new proposed legislation on social media. Plus, we're going to talk about a new budget figure that's just come out. The AXA legislative lunch break starts now. And it's just after one o'clock on a Wednesday, we welcome you to the live and interactive AXA legislative lunch break, along with Dr. Edgar Zaswata, AXA's executive director. I'm Naj Alakan, AXA's senior director of marketing and communications. Welcome. We are honored to have you after a week off. Go ahead and jump into the chat and say hello. Let us know where you're watching from today. Edgar, how are you? I'm doing well, Uh, Naj. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy (laughs) Valentine's Day to our to our uh, AXA family out there, sending much love to everybody. Um, I know I didn't wear any pink. I forgot. Yeah. You, 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 of course, were right on the, you know, the, you, forgot, you forgot to give me a reminder there, but I'll, I'll, I'll be better next time. I, I'm doing good. It's it's always fun to get back into the chair here. I know the last couple of weeks we had some opportunities to interact with our members. In case, folks, uh, hopefully a lot of you were able to join us last week with our all access uh, leadership assembly. I was excited to hear the numbers that we had more than 400 people yeah. come and join our meeting there over the course of, of, of the couple hours at one point or another. I think we were at 411 or so. Mm-hmm. That was great. I mean, I think just the fact that we usually have a little more over the 100 at any meeting. So we were able to uh, to kind of put that out there to to a larger crowd, had some great speakers, got a lot of good feedback. So it's something we'll definitely look forward to trying again here in the future of making some of our uh, gatherings open to all of our members. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great three days. Um, even though it was a lot of sitting, uh, it was still a great three days. And I'm looking at the uh, at, at our comment section, Lester Powell first, Neri is, uh, is second, Jared Hungerford uh, third on the chat today. I, I know that many of our viewers on this show were probably participating in the uh, virtual leadership assembly. So thank you so much for uh, for doing that. We've got an exciting show for you today. State Senator Nancy Skinner is going to be with us a little bit later on after our news headline. She's going to talk about this proposed legislation on social media and the impact on students, on kids. So we'll talk to her about that uh, coming up in just a moment. First, Edgar, I, I want to point out to this uh, story, this this headline really that came out from students, uh, school services uh, yesterday from our good friend Patty Herrera over at school services. Uh, the fiscal year to date revenues through January came in $6.7 billion below the governor's budget estimates. Here's a direct quote from that uh, news release. This decline is expected uh, in, in expected revenues, quote, portends rough waters for Governor Gavin Newsom's upcoming May revision. We all know that the May revision, uh, the governor's updated budget proposal uses the new figures as far as the general fa- uh, fund is concerned. Um, what the impact is going to be on public education on Proposition 98, we'll, we'll wait and see. But Edgar, your reaction to mm-hmm. seeing that figure? Well, shout out to Patty. I know Dr. Her, as she told us at Soup's Symposium a couple of weeks ago, that this was part of her prediction, right? Yeah. That maybe some of the revenue numbers that would come in here in the months to come would be trending down. And I think this is not unexpected news. I think as we've been talking about us trying to see what is to come and how the state's going to have to deal with that. Senator Skinner, who's going to be here with us today and her colleagues, I think that is this is part of this process. Governor puts out the budget. Uh, proposal in January. We have to wait to May. Hopefully there's a little bit of time for those numbers to change. But undoubtedly, I mean, tough choices ahead uh, there. I know Senator knows firsthand is in her leadership previously there with the with the budget committee that there's there's no easy answers. And then obviously we're looking at it from the education standpoint, but the state is this is across the board and, and all of the uh, budget and issue areas. Um, so again, we've said it many times. I think the one piece that's uh, that we should really be thankful to that foresight from not only the governor, from the legislature of really setting those dollars aside in previous years right. will mitigate the impact. Now, the big question is, 
you know, is this a dip? Is this, you know, or will we see kind of a rebound in terms of the revenues, not only in this year, but in the out years? Uh, but as we've been saying for the last couple, you know, really since the last six, eight weeks, since the LEO put out their projection, these are different times for schools. And I know our leaders are now having to adjust for that. Yeah, um, that gives me a chance to promote next week's show. We'll be talking about the budget trailer bills. Megan Baer uh, acts a legislative advocate uh, who's who's clearly decided that she is now the substitute co-host of this show. Edgar, when you're um, when you're I saw the comments when I wasn't there. I know Nary and others said that you know they 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 were they were fans of Megan. I'm a fan yeah. of Megan, so uh, you know I, I don't <laughs> I don't mind when she jumps in there. Absolutely, uh, she's going to be on the show next week to talk about trailer bills. There's one particular one on attendance uh, during storms and disasters. Uh, we're, we're in that winter season right now where we have a lot of storms. The one that came through two weeks ago, I think it was, was really impactful. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Next week, we'll be talking about trailer bills. also want to point out this story um, on chronic absenteeism. It's a story that was published today in EdSource. They're quoting a study that one in every four students missed at least 18 days of school per year since the pandemic. Now we know some of the approaches that some districts have been using to engage families, the phone calls, the letters home. According to the experts in this article, those tactics to get the students back in school, those work for some of the higher income families, but for the lower income families, they really need housing, food, health care, transportation, among other necessities, uh, and they need help from outside groups. And so that might be some of the main challenge in getting mm -hmm. students from those lower income families into school. But Edgar, this was a, a this was a really surprising statistic. I mean, we we we've talked long about, you know, post pandemic how whether the students stayed in public school or went out of state or they're on homeschool, we're still missing so many students. We don't really know where they're mm -hmm. at. But one out of every four students missing at least 18 days of school post-pandemic was a startling number. Yeah, it, it, the, the study, and I know there's a number of folks, Pace, others, that are a lot of dialogue around this issue. We yeah. can't go into any meeting without having our leaders talk about attendance and if anything, it quantifies what we what our folks have seen in their own local districts that this is going beyond, you know, the pandemic now and people getting sick. I think it's fair to say that especially it, it's we're seeing it in districts across the state. But as, as the study points out, especially with those kids uh, historically disadvantaged or when we see uh, brown and black students, this is where being impacted even more that it's a cultural phenomenon as well, right? Like that now coming off of the pandemic, just the the habit of going to school every single day, a lot of communities are struggling with that. And I think it, it brings us this up that we probably need to have a bigger systemic conversation about how do we really attack this at scale. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, folks, let's go ahead and bring in our guest right now. We'll switch topics here. Nancy Skinner, state senator from Senate District 6, representing Alameda and Contra Costa counties. Uh, senator Skinner, it is an honor to have you here with us on the live and interactive AXA legislative lunch break, your very first visit with us here uh, on the lunch break. I want to just go right into the specifics of Senate Bill 976, which is sponsored by uh, Attorney General Rob Bonta, by yourself, co-sponsored by AXA. This is on social media. Tell us about this bill and where the legislation is right now. Well, thank you. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, lunch, um, your regular lunch gathering. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank AXA for joining as a co-sponsor of SB 976, because your members know only too well the impact of social media addiction on our youth. And when I say youth, I mean our you know younger kids all the way to teens. It's no secret that social media addiction negatively impacts um, academic outcomes. And the we, we look at numbers from the Centers for Disease Control that kids are spending six to 14 hours a day, and that depends on the age. Those high numbers are coming up you know, with some 12-year-olds in front of a screen with much of that time looking at social media. 
And that's time that kids might otherwise be spending interacting with friends, studying, doing homework, um, perhaps, you know, athletics, other things that instead they're fixated on these social media platforms. Um, so it's, uh, it's a serious issue. And as we also know, the uh, lots of research shows that social media addiction, what comes with it is greatly increased levels of self-esteem, anxiety, suicidal ideation, and things like that, mm -hmm. exacerbating our young kids, our youth's mental health crises. Mm -hmm. Senator, uh, just echo Naja's thoughts of uh, thank you for joining us, not only today on this important issue, but I think just for your history of partnership with, with our organization. And I know you and your team have, have been one of those members that we could always count on, regardless of the issue. And, some, you know, and you've had to take on some tough ones that you're getting the perspective of what our school leaders have to say about potential legislation. Um, I, I know as a parent, as we were talking backstage, that you know, I, I see this firsthand. I hear it from our, from our members, from our folks on the ground on a regular basis. So I would say from a practical aspect, so should the bill pass, what, what immediate changes do you see and how, how will this play out? Well, I love to give that specifics because some people go, okay, well, you know, yeah, they build it. There's ways our kids are addicted, but how is SB 976 going to help? All right. What it does is it establishes sensible guardrails so that parents can protect their kids. Specifically, it builds into the platforms. It requires them to have as a default things like eliminating notices during school hours and when kids are sleeping. Um, eliminating the ability to send addictive feeds. So returning to the old days of Facebook, for example, where when you original Facebook, you only saw the items that you or your chosen friends liked. So those are some of the guardrails that are built into 976, which gives parents the option. If the parents don't want their kids to have those guardrails, they can, through, you know, with their permission, change the setting. But otherwise, social media has to have as a default those settings that I described. Uh, and if you have questions out there uh, for Senator Skinner, go ahead and put those into our comment section. We'll try and tackle some of those uh, at the end of the show. Uh, Senator, the week SB 976 was introduced, senators on Capitol Hill were holding a hearing with social media company executives about their role in responsible practices. How do you see California and specifically SB 976 leading the way to safer places for our kids? Well, as we know, that is not the first hearing that has been held by either the Senate or the Congress on this issue. And we have the Surgeon General of the U.S. warning about the dangers of social media to our young people. And there you have the picture of all these parents with their kids. You know, one of the things that really struck me at that hearing was a parent who described that their child watching a TikTok choking challenge. And this was a 12 year old. So this 12 year old didn't understand that this choking challenge could be lethal to him. And so he decided to engage in it unbeknownst to the family and that child died. So these are the kinds of things that we're trying to allow our parents to protect their children from and which the social media companies to date, even though they know they have all the documentation of these things have refused to themselves step up. Mm -hmm. So why we're um, proud to have SB 976, and I hope it's successful, and to have the attorney general support and access support, is that as California goes, so goes the nation. We have a history of leading the way on a wide range of issues. And we also have uh, other colleagues who have um, set some precedent in this space. My colleague, Assemblymember Wicks, for example, did a bill on uh, privacy protections. It's in court right now, but we're hopeful that uh, it will succeed and we will have um, privacy protections for our kids. And that was also a first in the nation effort. Senator, as a veteran policymaker, you know, you know, anytime you you put out one of these bills, that's going to get some reaction. And undoubtedly, there's going to be some folks who feel differently. And I know us as being partnered with the bill, I mean, it's something that we've thought about too, about, okay, what are going to be the, some of the arguments against this? I, I think it's fair to say that some folks may respond by saying, wait, couldn't you just achieve the same thing by just banning cell phones in schools? Mm -hmm. I know that's that, that, that our folks 
talk, we've we had some conversations just in the last couple of weeks about that. What, what would you say from a policy standpoint to folks that may say, hey, they, you, the state doesn't get, need to get involved in this. There, there's other ways to go about this. Well, historically, every bill that any of my colleagues or I have introduced around trying to add some protections or regulate social media in some way, the tech community has opposed, not only the social media companies, but the entire tech community. And, you know, we wouldn't have to do these kind of bills if the platforms themselves took responsibility and added these protections. They have not. That's why we feel compelled to act. Um, but, you know, it's simply banning phones at schools, why I think that's something a number of schools are doing, and I don't oppose that at all. It doesn't solve the problem because, for example, many of our kids have tablets that they utilize that their school uh, relies on for them to use, whether it's an iPad or something else, for different of their um, studies and, and curriculum. And they can access all this stuff on YouTube, even if they aren't directly on the social media platform, YouTube in effect repeats it. So even though YouTube doesn't necessarily have the same algorithms, they since they're repeating the things that are on TikTok or the others, it's in effect utilizing, it's comparable to being mm -hmm. able to, in effect, these design features that platforms use, they understand these features, they're sensational, their they their purpose is to attract you, to have you stay on. And of course, the the brain development of our youth is such that they don't have the same kind of discretionary or uh, impulse control mm -hmm. is you know development in their mm -hmm. brains to be able to stop it. So these are why simply banning phones alone in schools mm -hmm. aren't going to solve the problem. And the other brilliance of SB 976, it puts the control in the parents' hands. So if the parents think, look, my kid doesn't have a problem with this, I don't mind if they utilize these things, or I don't mind if they get notices at certain times, they can fix the settings. Mm -hmm. As Helen points out, some of us adults could probably benefit from some, <laughs> some of the algorithms, you know, you know, because uh, you said that tech companies are very savvy. We see it. We see it with our kids. We see it with adults. I mean, frankly, what you just said, I see it as a parent. Like my son's not on TikTok and some of these platforms. Somehow he finds a way to, yeah. to see all the same content. So no point well taken. Um, folks, if you have questions for uh, for Senator Skinner, go ahead and put those into the comments section. We'll try and tackle those uh, near the end of the broadcast. Senator, I, I want to just kind of piggyback on that question that Edgar asked about, well, can't you just simply, um, you know, ban cell phones in schools and the pushback we're getting from some of those that have that to say there are opponents of this bill who are saying this is simply just an overreach or even that it threatens privacy and protection of users, um, as some social media executives have argued. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, on the privacy issue, SB 976 has specific uh, language that protects the privacy of minors, which is really essential. I mean, I don't want to bring up some of the very scary things that we know. Uh, you know, we're being advised now, families are being advised, don't even post pictures of your babies, of your children on any of these platforms because of the way people can use it. Uh, and then the images stay forever. I mean, these are horrific. Uh, the concepts are horrific. But the privacy of minors is built into 976. So the companies are wrong there. And, you know, it's not overreach because the, again, it gives parents the ability to help protect their kids. It has these common sense things like not sending notices during school hours and not sending notices during midnight and 6 a.m. when, you know, legitimately kids should be asleep. So those are some very common sense protections. It doesn't eliminate kids from looking at or using social media, but it does definitely ask the, the companies to use as a default the uh, or rather to arrange the um, as change those algorithms for those my those users who are minors. So you are not using the design features that are addictive that you mm -hmm. otherwise use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You said and Lester Powell points out that as a parent, he even under existing parameters, when we think we're utilizing parental controls, those aren't as easy. So, right. It really gets down to 
what the tech company, how those, how those formulas are working on how to uh, push that, that content out. Uh, switching gear center, since we, you know you heard us on the top, that right now budget is kind of you know one of the big things our folks are worried about. Yeah. Uh, you served in the Senate, you 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 know in, in leadership on that committee. You've been through this before. Kind of what are your takeaways right now on uh, on the data that you're seeing? How do you think the legislature is going to approach this interesting year with frankly a, a different landscape when we're talking about the the state's finances? Well, thank you for that. But <clears throat> quickly to Lester Powell's point. Yes, right now, trying to trying yourself to build in these kind of uh, protections is very, very difficult. So that's yeah. why SB 976 has it built in as default. Mm -hmm. It is not, you do not have to sit there and try to figure it out. No matter how tech savvy you are, they make it difficult. So we, we built in as default. But on the budget issue, um, I uh, served in the assembly during the horrible recession time. I'm still scarred when we had to <laughs> whack away at our um, our school budgets when we know teachers were laid off. We, I mean, we seriously impacted our ability to provide quality education to our children in California. And we're in much better shape. This is not good news to be in a budget deficit. It is not. However, we're at the highest rate of per pupil funding that we have been in like ever. We're in the top 10 when we used to be at bottom last. So those are, those are good news. And the governor's proposal so far retains the funding that we, I mean, part of the problem, this is really hard to understand, but is that we adopted a budget in June that was not balanced. We did not know that at the time. We had to adopt a budget based on projections because of the delay in tax uh, receipts because the federal government delayed since we had various disasters and such. We didn't really get our tax receipts till October instead of April. Um, so we adopted a budget that was more optimistic it, based on the revenue projections we had. So technically, the amount of funding that we provided for schools for the fiscal year that we're in right now is higher than we should have. But the governor wants to hold harmless and is hoping that we can uh, shave some other things. Now with this new projection of an additional six billion, again, that it's not final. We're going to have April um, revenues in and maybe it gets adjusted some. But you know, there will be, uh, I predict there's just going to be a little bit of haircut, but there will not have to be the level that we've had to see in the past because the state has good reserves. When we were in the last recession, we did not have reserves. We did not have a Prop 98 reserve. We did not have a rainy day fund. We did not have a safety net reserve. We had none of that. So we're in better shape, but you know, it's still a deficit. There are gonna be some haircuts. We can't predict what yet. Yeah, I, I have to ask one final question, Senator. When you come up with a piece of legislation like 976, we, we had another piece of legislation that we sponsored last year uh, with Senator Josh Newman. How important is it when you have something that that so impacts kids to have an education stakeholder, a student stakeholder like AXA involved so you can continue those discussions through the lens of an education stakeholder? It is so essential, and I'm so glad you asked me that question. And this is why I'm so grateful to AXA for joining with us in this bill, because as I opened with, the school administrators, our teachers, our counselors, everybody on the school site are seeing very directly the impact of this social media addiction on the kids and children that they serve. And of course, parents do too. And we're working with the PTA right now. We're very optimistic the state PTA is gonna join on as a sponsor additionally, but we need the, the voices of the people who directly see this impact to, to verify. So it's not just Nancy Skinner saying it or Attorney General Rob Bonta. It is the people who are directly dealing with our children and seeing the impact. So it's so, so valuable. All right. So, Senator, as as we as we close here, I just want to let you know that when we have someone come on for a fifth time, it's kind of like Saturday Night Live. When you host for the fifth time, you get a, a jacket. When you come on the show for the fifth time, we actually make you an acts of business card. So one down, four to go <laughs> for your appearances here on the lunch break. Great. 
Great. Well, I look forward to another one. Thank you so much. State Senator Nancy Skinner from Senate District 9, uh, representing Alameda and Contra Costa County. Senator, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you and take care. Uh, Folks, if you like what you've seen, we invite you uh, to join us on YouTube and Facebook. Go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube or like us on Facebook. You'll get instant alerts when Edgar and I are about to come on the air with breaking news. Uh, and then a regular alert when we're going to come on for our normal Wednesday show. Also want to tell you, if you have great stories happening in your school district, we want to tell your stories as well. Go ahead and send in your news releases, your photos, your talking points to Michelle Caro, our EdCal editor, mcarl at axa.org. Also want to tell you our Lead with Pride Summit is coming up, I believe, next month, Edgar, uh, in Anaheim. Here's a preview. Lester Powell put it in there, uh, March 17th through 19th, the AXA Lead with Pride Summit that's happening in Anaheim. For registration and information, go to axa.org slash professional hyphen learning. Edgar, it would not be right if we didn't talk about the growth of the AXA family, the AXA legislative lunch break family. We had an addition yesterday, right before the news came on, uh, our producer, Gianna Miller. This is her brand new baby boy, Dominic, born at 5.59 p.m., 7 pounds, 14 ounces, 20.25 inches. Uh, This is Gianna's second son. Uh, So a new addition to the Axa family. Edgar, uh, we're growing and we're always happy to do that. Uh, One of my favorite parts, and Michael was talking about this, anytime we have an addition to the Axa family, especially here, Gianna, who does so much great work, uh, with your team, well, on the lunch break, does a number of other tasks for us. Uh, and she's got her hands full now, two babies yes. with uh, in diapers, right? So she, she and her husband are going to be busy, busy <laughs> parents there. But the two beautiful boys now, yeah. and we're wishing uh, Gianna the best, and we'll look forward to enjoy the time with the kids. I'm sure she's going to be watching there amongst in between feeding. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Hopefully, she's not watching today. She did have a baby uh, yesterday, but I, I'm sure we'll see Gianna in the comments at some point there. Look, if she's in the comment section today after after Dominic was born at 5:59 yesterday, we I'm may need to be take her phone away. That that would you know to send her Skinner. We may need to take her phone away. I, I would I would absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with you, folks. Thank you so much for joining us here on the AXA Legislative Lunch Break. Remember, we are. Live and interactive Wednesdays here on AXA Facebook and AXA YouTube. Be sure to be here with us uh, next Wednesday, 1 p.m. We'll be talking about the trailer bills. Uh, Have a great rest of the day and rest of the week, and we'll see you next time.